You have a moment where you were like, man, this is a reality. Like, I'm actually going to be able to go to the NFL. I could have told you staunchly, like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to play football in the NFL. That's what I'm going to do since I first stepped on the football field. And it wasn't necessarily like I was running past everyone. It's like, oh, no one can touch me. I'm going to play in the NFL. It was more like, well, that's what I want to do. I'm just going to go do it. Why do you think that the big schools kind of overlooked you? You know, it's tough. And, and I think, you know, there's... Probably a few reasons I did. I mean, I was 175 pounds, a you know, guy from a school that no no one ever came out of. Yeah. And uh, in a place that most people probably didn't want to recruit anyway. <laughs> yeah. Know. Freshman year, my <laughs> freshman year, I stepped on the scale. I was five foot four, 119 pounds. I remember I was really 150 by these ankle weights on my, and I had sweats over them. So you yeah, see, so I stepped on the scale, I got my extra four pounds. Of, it's a no-brainer that Cooper made to NFL because of his work ethic. I mean, he came in a little kid wearing ankle weights all the time, and without a doubt, the hardest working kid that's ever walked the campus of Davis High School. The thing I remember most about Cooper on the football field is just how hard he worked. It's gonna sound cliche, but he did. He, he, he outworked everybody else. From the start, you knew the kid was a grinder. I mean, the way he's been described in football is the way he was in the classroom. He'd put his head down and grind out math problems. You've always had the strongest work ethic of anyone I knew. I mean, I remember one time we got home from an away basketball game, and it's 11.30 at night, and you went to the weight room, mm -hmm. and you're pushing weights. Where does this work ethic come from? One, it starts with my parents, mm -hmm. and what they, how they instilled in me the, like, how you approach anything. I had to learn, I was forced to learn how to work yeah. as I was growing up, where everyone was taller than me, everyone was faster than me, yeah. everyone was stronger than me, and it got to the point, if I wanted to hang out with my friends, like, I had to do everything I could when we weren't playing sports to make sure that when we were playing, I could keep up with them. You get a chance in Eastern Washington. What was the four years there like? Really, it was just a blessing. Like I, I, as much as I wanted to be at you know USC or BAM or all these big schools, yeah. the friendships I made with these guys at Eastern Washington, um, you know things that last me a lifetime. When I was standing up at my wedding, I had my brothers next to me. I had swags. I was my best man, and then I had all football players. It was just a blessing to be there, have those relationships, have the coaches that I did. What it takes to be great. What it takes to and what it means to strive for, for uh, perfection in everything you do. And I think that's something that I pride myself on. Strong hands, good routes, got some nice speed to them. So I haven't always been the biggest or the fastest, but uh, it's been a long road. Six FCS records, four school marks, and the runaway winner of the Jerry Rice Award equals a dominant redshirt freshman season. He works harder than anybody on the team, and you know, that's supposed to be my job. He he works harder than anybody on the team, he, and that's why everything he gets, he deserves. His redshirt year was amazing to me, watching how he worked. He prepared as much, if not more, than some guys who were playing on Saturday. I mean, he really did, he was studying film. I mean, he watches anything. He studies anything he can, so he's just such a grinder, and then that's infectious. For Cooper Cup, his separation is in his preparation, something he learned after working alongside future Hall of Famer Peyton Manning at the Manning Passing Academy. You know, pick uh, Peyton's mind a little bit and um, just see how those guys prepare each week. And his, I mean, his regimen and what he talks about how he goes through film, you know, preparation for the game and how he attacks them during the game and his constant effort to just be on the attack and know everything. He just, it just shows you why he's so good. Knowing where your identity is and knowing that as much as I want to be a football player and strive to be that, I'm so much more than that. It's been maybe the most instrumental part of this whole thing. My faith is grounded in my real purpose here and that there's a, a kingdom um, past us, that this life is temporary. There's such great things ahead. No matter what the naysayers say, no matter what anyone tells me, I know that my identity is in Christ and nothing can take me off of that. West is back to throw, zips a pass to Connor Cup. He's across the 20, still on his feet, churning to the 15, and he's got a first. This is Cup with a reception. Pivot move across the 10. And got to the pylon, touched it. It's all about being savvy. He understands how to utilize the speed and agility of Ugo Amadi. He's been playing this way his whole life. Richard French thought he had him locked up. He didn't. Now he throws another beauty on the run. Angling here to the center of the field. Cooper Cup 
Coming near side, trying to cut back, puts his head down. I mean, you wonder how many teams in the Pac-12 Conference, how'd they miss on this young man? Dad, grandfather played in the NFL. He's got natural football skills, and he wants to rock in critical moments. Los Angeles Rams select Cooper Cup, receiver, Eastern Washington. What has kind of been the transition to move down to Los Angeles? It's definitely not Yakima or Cheney or anything like that, but it is different. The people here are, are incredible. I mean, you see people that are chasing their dreams, that are doing some, um, you know, going after things and uh, being able to just walk down the street and see the people that are grinding just to, you know, be able to get there. It's, it's uh, really inspiring. You don't really see that too much in Yakima. No, you it's, don't. It's just a different atmosphere <laughs> there. <a> different <laughs> thing. Well, as you know, Yakima is not, there's not a whole lot to do outside of like, you know, if you're into the hunting, fishing, you know, aside from that, you don't go, there's nothing like LA where you can go out and, you know, walk into the city and just kind of explore or anything like that. It's more like, you know, go to the park, get some friends together, you go play sports. When, when did you first start playing football? I grew up playing against my dad in the living room. You know, yeah. get on his knee, have to get from one side to the other. And that's like my earliest memories. I'm, that was the first house we lived in. And that, I must, I couldn't have been older than five years old, but vivid memories of being able to do that. I can't want to play football, I want to be the best mm -hmm. to do it. He outworked everybody else. You're seeing it now on, you know, on TV on Sundays. And it's, it's like, this is the same kid and he's still making people fall over just by shaking his shoulders. With a solid foundation of fundamentals, Cooper will remain a force on the football field. It's gonna to be tough because teams are gonna to wanna to double team him and stuff. He's the number one receiver in the nation. I would too, I don't, I don't see why they didn't start doing it last year. But even if his stats, you know, just total catches, yards, touchdowns, wherever those finish, I'm not too concerned with. His impact can be even greater even if some of those aren't as high. Reason being, he's no secret. The word is out about the All-American wide receiver, and it's no secret to how he will approach the upcoming season. Each year you go back to square one. I mean, when I came in, um, redshirt year, I mean, that, the mentality I took towards attacking that year and preparing for my first year to play, taking that attitude of I've earned nothing, and taking that all the way through the off season, and again and again earning it, earning it, earning it. Um, I think by doing that, I mean, you just you know, continue to get better. A proven talent on the field, but an even better man off. How he carries himself, just an incredible young man, you know, a positive young man, but a competitive as all can be. They see that and then they see the work ethic. I mean, that just bleeds you know, bleeds through in such a positive way. Football is in the blood for the Cup family, with both his father and grandfather playing in the NFL. The expectations are high, but the values take one to the next level. I think one of the most important things that they taught me was just keeping my identity where it needs to be is, um, you know, no matter what happens in football, my identity is in my faith in Christ, and I know that that's where, that's where I find, find my peace, and learning that from him, from my dad and my grandpa and the work it takes, I and mean, that's what has really shaped my career in football. He's humble, he's a Christian guy, he's, he's very positive, and you know, he's, he's a great guy. That's why I really like playing with him. He's definitely the best receiver I've played with in my life.